We're going to talk about the general trends of the periodic table. Now, um, there are basically when you Google trends of the periodic table on Google, in Google, you basically see a whole slew of trends uh, from electronic activity to ionization energy and others. Uh, we're not concerned about that at the moment. What we're really going to focus on is three major trends, which relates to the atomic size of the periodic table. Uh, the, the, we're also going to look at the trends of uh, reactivity in terms of met metals and non-metals, and we're going to look at trends in metallic trends uh, in the peri periodic table. Now, it is important to note that these are just broad generalizations because as you go along the periodic table from left to right or up and down, you will see uh, exceptions to these trends. And all because uh, it all has to do with the way it interacts, um, the electrons are, the way the electrons are, and how the electrons interact with itself or other species or substances. Also, and how the geometric or um, uh, or the shape of the, or the geometric com shape of the element as well as the compounds or whatever. So there are a lot of other explanations, but we will not dive to that. We will simply just generalize it in terms of size, reactivity, and metallic character. Um, some books will talk about <coughs> the melting or boiling point trends in a periodic table, but it's really, in my opinion, it's really hard to do that. Uh, but it will be easy if we just focus on a particular group. All right. So let's talk about the size, the atomic size. This is an, the atomic size, not the iron size or anything like that, but the atomic size. So you're looking at the atomic radius of the, um, the elements. So as you go down the group, uh, the atomic size of the elements should increase. All right, it should get bigger as you go down the group. The reason being is because as you go down the group, uh, you add energy levels. Each energy level encompasses the energy level inside it. So if you add energy level, you add another energy level, you add another energy level, you can see the size of the atom gets bigger. Okay? Uh, also, when you go from uh, right to left, the atom size also gets bigger. And the reason is uh, because <clears throat> when you go from left to right, right, the atom size gets smaller. So I'm going to use that as the explanation. Um, as you go from left to right, the outer energy share level remains the same, right? So if you're like in group three or row, uh, period three or period four, the energy level remains the same. So um, as you add more, as you go to the right, the number of protons and the number of electrons also increase, okay? And because the number of uh, electrons or the inside energy level remains the same, they are the same energy levels inside, the, and the number of electrons and protons increases as you go from left to right, that means there is more electrostatic attraction between the nucleus, which has the protons, the positive charge, and then the electrons, the valence electrons, which is, has the negative charge. So generally, it will, there will be more electrostatic attraction, so it, it will pull it in, and so as you go across the period from left to right, uh, it will become smaller. Okay. So that is the reasoning for atomic sizes. Now let's talk about reactivity. For metals, uh, the reactivity increases as you go down the group. And the reason being is because, uh, especially if you talk about the um, uh, group one uh, elements, uh, the reason being is because as you go down the group, you add more energy levels, right? So that means that valence electron, that one valence electron, especially for group one, that one valence electron is so far away from the nucleus that it is susceptible 
to be taken out, is susceptible to be taken away. The energy level needed to remove that valence electron now is really, really low. It's, it's low, lower. I should say that. Yeah, it's lower. Okay? And also, yeah, so that's the generalization for the reactivity uh, in terms of uh, metallic elements. It goes, the reactivity goes up as you go down the group. Uh, Nonmetals, on the other hand, uh, are quite the opposite. Uh, they become more reactive as you go up the group, okay? So they're not reactive when they're down there, and they're more reactive when they're out there. And it's also because of the, the energy number, number of energy levels. Now remember, let's talk about halogens now. Now remember, um, if you talk about bromine, right, uh, it has so many energy levels, so it's really out there. And so uh, the valence electrons is all the way outside, all right? And so uh, there is very little attraction, uh, very smaller attraction between the nucleus and the electrons outside. Also, what happens is that um, those, that electron uh, generally, uh, the, the generally makes it harder for that uh, element like bromine or iodine to uh, take an electron away from someone else, okay? But for, for fluorine, for example, you have um, two energy levels, all right? So it's uh, the, the nucleus and then the first energy shell and then the second energy shell. And so it's really compact and small. The, 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 the atom size is really small and there's only seven of them, seven valence electrons. And because it's so small and there's a strong uh, electrostatic force at play to attract the uh, atoms inwards. So that means when it's, when fluorine gets really close to another element that really wants to give away that electron, uh, the, there is going to be an electrostatic attraction between the nucleus of the fluorine and the neighboring electron from an uh, electron donor or a metal element. All right, so it's closer to that neighboring electron. The nucleus is closer to the neighboring electron, so it's gonna take that electron out from them. So that's just my way of explaining the reactivity of metals and nonmetals. Now the metallic character of um, of the periodic table goes like this. It becomes more metallic as you go to the left and it becomes more metallic as you go down. And the reason being is that the metallic character is associated with how, how willing an element is willing to give out that electron, that valence electron, how willing it is to allow that valence electrons to be delocalized or, or donated, all right? So again, we understand that as you go down the group, you add energy levels, so that valence electrons that's all the way out there, it's, has, it's not really pulled or attracted to the nucleus that has the protons. So in that sense, that, those valence electrons out there are susceptible to donation. So, it be, so that means it's more metallic in nature. As you go from left to right, or right to left, in this way, uh, again, uh, the size of the uh, atom is like bigger. And so that means that the distance of, from the valence electrons to the nucleus is, is further. So that means it also kind of what that those valence electrons are kind of susceptible to donation. Okay? So these are the trends.